Um, okay, hello everyone. I'm Yu Haoli from Columbia University. Um, today, I'm very excited to talk about our recent work on improved upper bounds for finding Tusky fixed points. And this is a joint work with Ji Chen from Columbia University. So the Tusky fixed points uh, is defined on a complete lattice. So here, uh, let's consider the complete lattice over a grid point of n to the k. And the order is defined as uh, is defined as a natural partial order, where for every two points x and y, uh, we say x is no no more than y if for every coordinate uh, x i is uh, no more than y i. So there is a quick um, uh, uh, quick pictures to to show what does this order mean. So for example, we have a x in the two D space, then the green points are the points that are great uh, that are greater than x. And the um, points in the pink uh, uh, area is uh, less than x, and we have you know similar picture in the three D dimension. So, uh, so let's define the monotone function over over this complete lattice. So, as as the name suggests, a, a, mono, a monotone function f is uh, is that for every two pair, uh, two points x and y, uh, if x and y are comparable, then this function can preserve this order. So in, 1920, uh, in 1955, Tusky proved a fixed point theorem says uh, a monotone function on a complete lattice has a complete lattice of fixed points, in particular, a list and the greatest fixed point. So first, this, uh, this can guarantee you know, the existence of fixed points, but furthermore, it can guarantee there is a list and greatest. So Tusky fixed point theorem has uh, extensive applications on game theory, especially for establishing the uh, existence of pure Nash equilibrium in supermodular games. And in this grid model, I can quickly show you why there is a you know list greatest uh, list fixed point and greatest fixed point. For example, if we start from the list point, which is one to the k. Then, uh, if it's a fixed point, then we are done, and obviously it's, it's list fixed point. Otherwise, we uh, take the f of uh, one to the k, which is, uh, for example, this arrow, and uh, because of the uh, and because of the monotonicity, if we follow this path, then you know this path must be a monotone path. And since there are only finite number of points, so this path must eventually um, get to a fixed point. And it can be quickly verified that this is a, a list fixed point. And similarly, we can start from the greatest point n to the k to uh, to define the path and follow the path. So, um, so the the point, the corresponding point, will be a greatest fixed point. And as you can see, um, there could be multiple fixed points. You know, except this um, this greatest and this list, there could be you know other fixed point here. So we are considering the complexity of finding a Tusky fixed point over this grid. And um, naturally, the, the value iteration or path following algorithm gives us an algorithm with complexity n to the k. Uh, sorry, uh, with complexity order n times k. And a quick comment is that this is not a truly polynomial algorithm because the polynomial factor should be uh, log n and k. And for example, if we start from the greatest point and follow the path, then we can actually find the greatest fixed point. But for a Tusky problem, we uh, we only need to find a uh, arbitrary fixed point. So in 2011, Dong Qi and Ye gives us a <coughs> binary search algorithm with complexity log n to the k. <coughs> so note that in general, uh, log n to the k is not comparable to n times k. But for k is small or um, k is a constant, then uh, this algorithm is a truly polynomial time algorithm. <clears throat> but uh, it might miss the list uh, or uh, and greatest point, a fixed point. It uh, it can only guarantee to find a fixed point. So let's quickly go through the binary search algorithm. Uh, if we look at the one-dimensional Tusky problem and we query the middle point. If it's a fixed point, then we are done. Otherwise, let's assume it goes right. Then we can we can show that uh, there must be a fixed point in this green area. 
So this means uh, we can shrink the space, search space by half. And let's let's look at the two D cases where <clears throat> you you take the you know mi middle points. So fix the x two to be n over two. And we uh, let's just ignore the second coordinate. Look at the first coordinate. Then this is essentially a one D task problem, and we can use uh, log n queries to find a fixed point here. And uh, then the then it must be a point that. Uh, either goes up or goes down. So, for example, it goes up. Then you know by uh, by the path following argument, we can show that there must be a fixed point in this green area. So we can shrink the search space by half using you know log n queries. So um, oh, as as you can see, it's it's very easy to generalize to higher dimensions for n to the k grade. You can uh, fix you know uh, x k to the uh, uh, half n and it's a k minus one dimensional uh, problem and you use log log n to the k minus one queries to find the fixed point and then shrink the search space by half. So uh, in 2020, Atsumi, Papa Dimitro, Rubinstein, and Yanaka keys give us a matching lower bound for Tusky uh, of two uh, two dimensional Tuskies. So it says any deterministic or randomized algorithm must make uh, omega log square queries for task key N2. So this lower bound is under black box, uh, black box model, uh, which means the, the algorithm can only, query, can, can only have a, a Oracle access and query the uh, value of, uh, of some points. And the most uh, interesting part is that um, the proof of, of, of this lower bound um, gives uh, shows that any algorithm must solve omega log n independent one dimensional task key problems, you know, which is exactly the what the binary search does. So this suggests that the log 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 n to the k query algorithm is essentially optimal for arbitrary constant k, and uh, surprisingly, in twenty twenty one, Fernley, Pawlowski, and Savani. Gives give us give us a faster algorithm with complexity order of log n to the two third k, and this is quite surprising uh, given given you know the proof idea of uh, the lower bounds. So so the algorithm consists two parts. The first is, is a concrete algorithm with log n square uh, complexity for the three dimensional task key, and the second is uh, a decomposition a decomposition theorem. Which says if you have a, a eight dimensional task key, um, if you have an algorithm for eight dimensional task key with QA queries and B dimensional task key with QB queries, then you can solve the A plus D dimensional task key for, uh, with QA times QB queries. So this means for every you know three dimensions, they can save a, a log n factor. And our main result is uh, improved upper bounds for finding task key fixed points. And the algorithm is with complexity log n to the roughly half k. So our result is not uh, only about the um, uh, task key, but we define a weaker variant called task key star to help to have us you know build down the whole techniques. And we also give a decomposition, new decomposition theorem for this task key star, and we will mention it later. So before going into details of our uh, techniques. Let's quickly um, see what uh, <clears throat> what does the DQY algorithm do, <clears throat> do for three dimensional task key. So it's like uh, fix the x ray to be half n and use uh, log log n, uh, log square query queries to find the fixed point. So so this point satisfies that uh, you can start you can follow start from starting from this point and then there must be a you know fixed point. But um, based on this idea, we can actually relax this condition um, to be to to not require to find a fixed point for this to this slice, but uh, actually post fixed point or pre fixed point. So here, post fix means uh, fx is no more than x, and prefix is uh, fx is no less than x. So this is exactly FPS algorithm does. So um, they, uh, they, they're 
uh, important light masses, uh, we can, so if we only requ require, so if we only need to find the prefix or postfix point, then the complexity can be only order log n. And, uh, you know, based on, you know, alt the alter binary search algorithm, the whole algorithm takes uh, log square n queries. So the idea is like, um, if we if we only look at the two D two D slice, then um, this point, uh, then you know for one query we have some information, but the information is not enough because we have a matching lower bound. However, if we add the information uh, of the third dimension, then we can shrink the search space by 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 exactly half. And um, basically, for every query, we can cut the search space by half, and uh, you know finally. Uh, with comprehensive analysis, we can show that the complexity is log n, and we can find a prefix or postfix point. And our Tusky star problem exactly um, abstracts these ideas, uh, which is defined as um, so. Let's start from the uh, original Tusky, Tusky problem with a monotone function f, but we add a monotone sine function b. And the monotone sine function means uh, for every comparable to comparable x and y, the you know b pre uh, b preserves this order. And the Tusky star asks to find a point that that is either uh, a uh, either a prefix uh, either a postfix point, and uh, b x is no more than zero, or f uh, f x is no no less than x, and b x is no less than zero. So this sign function essentially captures, you know, the x, uh, the x draw, uh, coordinate here. And a quick observation is that the solutions always exist by Tusky fixed point theorem, and but it's also crucial to not uh, to not required to uh, find a fixed point. So our main technical theorem is is a new decomposition theorem for this Tusky star. So which states um, for for if if Tusky star, if for an A dimensional Tusky star can be solved in QE queries and a B dimensional Tusky star can be solved in QB queries, then Tusky, then A plus B dimensional Tusky star can be solved in, you know, order of B plus one times QA times QB queries. And the main uh, ob obstacle is that we have a extra sign function and this, this function can take value of um, plus minus one and zero and all this um, all these rows are not uh, are different, and we need to carefully uh, work for it. So um, let's uh, let's look at some open problems uh, after uh, after this talk. So uh, the the main open problem is to come up with techniques for you know uh, either lower bounds or upper bounds, and for the black box model that we studied. Uh, the, the most important problem is to close the gap between log square and log to the uh, half k algorithm. And note that the first um, the first gap is from Tusky. Uh, sorry, the first the first gap is from the um, Tusky four dimensional Tusky because we have upper bound of log square for Tusky uh, Tusky n three. So for the uh, for the Tusky N4, the lower bound is log square and the upper bound is it's still log, uh, log, log cube. And note that uh, if we can, uh, so the, the weaker problem to, to what I said is uh, uh, log, n, uh, log n versus log square for the Tusky star uh, of N3. And um, for the white box model, uh, uh, Atsumi, Papa Dimitri, Rubinstein, and Nakakis pro also prove that Tusky is in the intersection of PLS and PPAD. And the most in, in, uh, interesting part is when they prove the PPAD uh, membership, they actually um, use the idea of Tusky star, not the original Tusky. And given the two recent breakthroughs that uh, we have complexity classes results that EP, EOPL equals to CLS equals to PLS intersect PPAD, then the question would be, could we prove Tusky is complete for you know, some complex, complexity classes? And the minimal that we know is CLS uh, or EPOL. Yeah, thanks.